Hey friends, welcome back. Today we are going to learn how to make Susan Tierney Cockburn's Hemlock and Cones. I will walk you through this easy technique as we make the branch and the mini pine cone. Let's have some fun. Welcome back friends. From the previous video, when we made the American Holly and we created this card, I just wanted to show you the completed card. Here it is here, everything glued down. Um, I got the little hemlock pine cones, the little mini pine cones all glued down, and the American Holly with its berries, and of course the gorgeous poinsettia. And um, today we are gonna focus on making a hemlock branch. So this is the set here that we're focusing on today. We are gonna make a branch and a pine cone so that you can see the technique for creating that. So I've got my kit out and the first thing we're gonna do is die cut our pieces, which I've done ahead of time, and color them. So for this, I'm using Copic markers in E27 for the pine cones and the stem, BG78 and BG99. So the first thing we'll do is color the stem and the pine cones. And I'm just gonna color it on the front and the back. And this is a branch, so of course, you know, we have the brown stem. It doesn't have to be exact. And in my first one, I actually went up all the way up the, the, the needles too. And um, I ended up going over it all with green, so I don't know if that's actually really necessary to do that. You can. I mean, we can, you know, here I'll do it on the back so you can see what I'm talking about. You know, going up like this to the, the tip of the branch like that I mean we can do that we're gonna come in and make the bristles all a dark green a forest like color green it's it quite a different color than the um, the brilliant greens that we used in the other foliage in our card. It gave quite a contrast. And this does not have to be perfect. This is gonna look just fine once it's all colored. You're not gonna see your strokes or anything like that. There's no artistry here. You're just laying down your color. Like so. And on the back side, I'm not even going to worry about the other branches because we're just going to color it all in green. Okay, for this, for, for these guys, I'll just do right side up to start with. That way I know which side's been done. And for this, I just took a straight pin to hold it down. That way it doesn't move while you're painting it or coloring it. So just hold it down with a straight pin and that way it doesn't move on you. And just have some paper or a, um, if you have a glass mat on your surface, you can just use the glass mat. Turn it over, color the other side. And do that with all of them. Okay, as you get to the end of these, realize you can use any alcohol marker doing this. Um, and one thing I liked about doing the alcohol markers with these little guys is that it gets the ends. It gets the ends of your die. So you don't, because we're going to see both sides of this die when we cup them. And you don't see any white. I tried to do it with inking the paper first and then die cutting. And I didn't like that you could see that white. And these are so tiny that it's really important to have them all brown. So I really liked using the markers on these. Okay, 
so I've got those done. You could also use a pokey tool if you wanted to do it to hold on, but just realize that the alcohol does get on the end of your pen. Um, you could use some regular alcohol to pull that off if you wanted to use your pokey tool. I think just a regular um, household alcohol would probably just pull that alcohol staining off your tool if you did use a pokey tool. But I just had this in my glue bottle, so I just used that. Just simple, easy, and it was right there. So with the bristles, we're going to use these. And I think when I did my sample, I think I used the, yeah, I wanted this color to come in more on the bristles at the end. I wanted them to have that bluish. So I used the darker one here and the lighter one here. So that's BG99 for these. And you might want to just put your finger right there at the beginning just to stabilize the branch a little bit because they are really thin. And I'm just going up about three. And here again, this is not precise. So you do not have to be getting this perfect. I'm not trying to stay on any in any lines or anything. So just put on your color. Don't worry about anything else. Did I get all of them? Yep. And on the back, you can just choose one color to do. I think I'll just use the lighter one. Let's just go over the whole back. This is kind of more of a evergreen, isn't it, color. That's more of a turquoise, tealish feel to it. Like a spruce. I'm just using the side of the pen, I'm just dragging it along. It's more important on the other side. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, now I'm just going to look at this on my hand here and see where we might have left some white. I can see it better when it's on my hand. It's a little bit right there. And we got some brown still, so I'm gonna pull the brown back out. It's got some little edges. You can see them better now that everything else is colored. Alrighty, looks good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crease this down the center with our leaf tool. Just give this a crease, oops. And let's crease this and I don't 
don't know if I did this on my original or not. I think I just went straight to the snipping. Okay, that just gives a little definition to the to the leaves or the pine needles. Okay, so now you're going to take your sharpest snips that you have, and these spellbinder ones are awesome. Let me tell you, and you're going to go in. And I know you're going to think I'm nuts, but this makes such a difference. You're going to go in and you're going to carefully cut each one of these little bristles in half. Long ways. Like so. Let's see if I can get up close so you can see that. Oops. Let's see. I don't know. If I look at the markers all over my hands. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. That's what you're going to do to each one of them. And this is just going to make your branch fluffier. And just be careful not to snip your fingers. So just keep going until you've got all of them done. Now look at that branch right there. Doesn't that look cool? Here, let me see if I can do it this way. It is a little fluffier rather than flat like this one got all those little fluffy bristles and there are little sharp bristles too so it really makes it lifelike looking so do that to each one and then we'll make pine cones okay so here we go we've got all of them snipped so you can see there, all of them are snipped. The only other thing you could do to add a little more body is you can come through here and put your reverse tweezers right on that stem line and crease up a little bit where you scored it and just kind of leave it closed and bend up a little. You could do that on all of them. It just makes them poke up a little bit more. I think out of snipping all of those, I think I only lost one bristle where I snipped too close. There we go. All right. Doesn't that look real? Isn't that cool? Okay. Now to make the pine cones, we're going to use the molding mat. And we're going to put these all face down, so right side down to the mat. And there's six large and there's six small. So you cut the die twice, and the die does say times two on it. So we're going to shape them by cupping them. Because we need them as tight as possible. So for that, we are going to use, we're going to change our tools out here. We are going to use two different heads. We're going to use the small stylus, and then we're going to use the one that is shaped like the golf tool, the smallest one. And to change these, it's just like your other tool in one. You just pull this down and pull it out. Then you have a ball bearing in there that latches with the with that there you go and then we'll put this one on this side just gotta find where the ball bearing is there it is okay so for the large ones we're going to use the little golf shaped one and we're just going to oh i want to put that all the way in And you're just going to drag that in. Drag that pedal inwards. 
that way it cups and look how good it does this tool is awesome it just pulls it in and you can roll it with your fingers a little bit and it is tiny but it is mighty so you're going to do that four times or six, I'm sorry, six times on the large one. And then you're going to use your smallest ball tool on your little ones. And you're going to kind of poke on each of the corners to round each of the petals, the ends of the petals, just to soften that fibers in the paper. And then poke in the middle and just kind of drag all of it to the middle. And then I like to pick it up and roll it between my fingers because that helps close it even more and it cups it all the way to where it's tiny tiny and you're going to do that six times so I'm going to do all that and I will be right back and if you're making this with me just pause your video I'll be right back okay I have got all of them shaped so you have three small I mean six small and six large so now we're going to be using our precision tweezers and our Barely Art Glue. And if you have the shaping mold, this also comes in handy as well. So I'm going to sit that right there. This is an add-on that you can purchase on the Spellbinders website that is also part of Susan's collection. And when you're on the Spellbinders website, you can just type in Susan or Susan's in the search box and you can find all of these items easily. Um, plus I'll have links for everything below. So that's the easiest way to find them. I'll make sure I link this and like the kit and the hemlock and the snow garden collection, etc. So, okay, so for this, for the little tiny ones, some of these are smaller than the others, so I try to take the smallest one and I'm going to put it inside one of the other ones. We're just going to put some glue on it and we're going to try our best to offset them. Let's see if I can get you close enough here. Try our best when we're putting this in to offset these and it's a little a little difficult to get it started but once you get it started it's a piece of cake okay then take the next one and pop a little glue on the end of it and again pop it right inside there offsetting it I'm telling you guys these tweezers are your friend I didn't quite offset that very well so just grab one of them and twist a little bit there we go and you can just push down in the center to let the tape or the glue grab Alrighty, then we just do it again, and I think that one looks a little bigger. Let's see, these are, I'm looking at the sizes of them. This one kind of looks smaller, so I'm going to put that one on the inside. Make this the smallest in here. Whoops. You are tiny. And then I'm just going to kind of squeeze around here a little bit. because That's going to be the center. So I'm just kind of squeezing it closed a little bit. And then we're going to put this in the next one. 
and you're going to keep doing this all the way to the big ones. And then you will have a pine cone. Isn't that easy? Once we get this little one done, we just have the one more. I'm going to put it in the fourth inch mold and let it set while we work on the, the bigger petals or pieces. Okay, so at this point, You've got six of the little ones. I'm just squishing kind of the them closed there at the tip. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you can tell that pretty much. You got six of them. There we go. All clustered in, inside each other. So now I'm just going to sit that right down here and push it down in there and that's going to let it kind of close up and let it glue to let the glue dry while we work on this next one let's see this one kind of looks smaller so i'm going to put it in the middle same thing these are a little easier though The more of these you do, the easier it gets. I've done five or six now. The first couple are strange <laughs> just because you, you're, you feel like you're all fingers. But the more you do them, the easier. I mean, they are quite easy. So don't let the size scare you. They are adorable on the card. So I'm just pushing down in the center and just pushing it against my finger and that's really all there is to it guys and then once we're done here we're going to put this or we're going to put the center right down into the center of this one and remember every pine cone looks different too matter of fact the first couple that I made and this is okay for you too as well I I didn't get it tight enough and I did three of these and six of the littles and and I did three and three of the bigs I did three three and then I had these and three and three and I put these two together and then I I went to put this and another three together and it just looked funny to me the two big sets the six big ones looked funny to me and I think it's because I didn't have them tight. And I went ahead and just took them out. I, I, I was happier with them with only three large and six little. So go with what looks best for you. Don't worry about... Um, don't worry about the numbers all being right all the time. You know, just like with my poinsettia. Well, the dies said two for the small and two for the large. Well, no, it said one for the small and two for the large. Well, I put an extra one in the center of the smalls. I wanted it a little fuller. So, you know, just make it, make it happen. If that's your vision, then that's your vision. Now I'm gonna just sit this little one right inside the big one. And I'm going to go ahead and use the stylus this time, this little, and push that right down in there. Let that glue grab. I got a little glue on the outside going in. And you have the tiniest, most adorable little pine cone. So now you have your hemlock 
and your pine cone. So make two or three of them, put a cluster, because they usually come in clusters on the hemlock. And you have got yourself a festive branch for your card. So I hope this has been helpful. Stay tuned in the future. We'll have more videos. But for now, I'm going to go. And I hope you've enjoyed. <laughs> Talk to you soon, friends. Bye-bye.